Welcome to a weekly focus with me, Sushani Kluat, on NBT World. During the past week, where the level of air pollution was high and above safe level in Bangkok, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, has declared air pollution control areas in all 50 districts and ordered strict actions against construction sites and traffic following the particulate matter 2.5 problem in Bangkok. The BMA on Wednesday met with the Department of Pollution Control, the Department of Health, the Traffic Police Division and relevance units to conclude le legal measures to combat the air pollution in Bangkok. After the meeting, Deputy Governor of Bangkok Thuy Saklet Prapan said all 50 districts in Bangkok were declared pollution control zones according to the Public Health Act. The law authorizes government units to impose measures to control the situation, such as inspection of construction sites, traffic limits, and spraying of water into the air. Also this week, drones were deployed to spray water into the air in six areas in Bangkok with critical level of pollution. Each drone carries 10 liters of water to help with dust attachment. And as for measures to prevent health problems for Thai children, the Ministry of Education has ordered 450 schools in Bangkok closed for, from January 29 to February 1st due to the worsening air pollution in Bangkok and its vicinity. Acting spokesman of the government, Puttipong Punakan, said on Wednesday that Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha had instructed the Ministry of Education to issue temporary closure orders for the schools, which include schools under the Office of the Basic Educational Commission, private schools, and vocational schools. As for 437 schools under the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, the Bangkok governor has ordered them closed during the same period. The schools will make up the time of the closure later. Universities are allowed to consider whether to close as they see fit. However, ONET or National Educational Exams for Grade 6 and Grade 9 students will not be postponed. As for other nearby provinces such as Samut Prakan and Samut Sakon, the Premier said he had given full authority to their provincial governors and instructed them to enforce the law strictly. The Gasikon Research Center has estimated that the one-month initial economic loss from finders blanketed Bangkok and its vicinity is around 26 billion baht. According to Gasikon Research Center operated by Gasikon Bank in Thailand, the toxic air pollution in Bangkok and its vicinity in the past one month since the end of 2018 has cost the Thai economy at least 2.6 billion baht or around 83 million dollars due to its impact on the health of the population and tourism which is one of the country's main industry. The cost on public health includes hospital fees which patients with allergies or respiratory system diseases worsened by the haze have to spend. Also there is a cost for buying masks to filter out the dust. Though these expenses boost the health and export industry, it caused economic damage to the general public of around half of the loss estimation or 1 billion baht or around 30 million dollars. For the rest of economic loss, Gazikon Research Center points out that the impact comes from tourists who suddenly change destination from Bangkok to other provinces of Thailand because of the haze, or for some people, decided not to come to Thailand at all. Though currently the impact on tourism industry is still minimal, it could affect tourism in the future if there is no improvement in the situation, according to the report. Meanwhile, the Economic Intelligence Center of Siam Commercial Bank of Thailand has issued a report discussing the long-term solution. The report mentions that diesel engine combustion is the main cause of the smog in Bangkok, or around 26%, followed by biomass burning around 25%, and secondary dust emissions. It warns that to fix the situation in the long term, Thailand needs to upgrade its current Euro 4 to 5 or 6 emission standards. Also to monitor the quality of all car engines operating in 56% of trucks or public transport vehicles in Bangkok now. As for now, the report says that there are around 2.7 million diesel vehicles, excluding motorcycles, registered in Bangkok. 
There are only seven weeks left before the general election in Thailand. Many political parties started to introduce their members of parliament candidates as well as the candidates for prime minister. In the past week, political parties started its political campaign after the government has announced the date of general election scheduled on March 24th. The Palang Prasharat party, the party closely related to military government, has announced that it will propose General Prayutsan Osha, the current Prime Minister of Thailand, along with its party leader Uttama Savanayon and Deputy Prime Minister Somkhit Chatusi Pithak to be one to be its three prime ministerial candidates for the approaching election. Meanwhile, it's also introduced policies such as the 100,000 baht discount for purchasing electric vehicles or expanding BTS SkyTrain services. Meanwhile, other members of the Phue Thai party joined an exercise session at Lumpini Park in Bangkok and talked to the oil palm producers from Krabi province and B100 biodiesel users. The party relates that biodiesel is one of the solutions for air pollutions in Bangkok and nearby provinces, and the use of oil palm in the production of biodiesel would help raise the price of the crops. Democrat Party leader Apisit Vechashiwa introduced MP candidates for 62 constituencies of 16 northern provinces. The slogan of the party's election campaign is End Poverty, Build People, Build Nation, as he promised to increase monthly stipend for welfare cardholders from 500 to 800 baht. Suwanapum International Airport in Samut Prakan province launched a Thailand e-visa on arrival campaign on Tuesday to boost tourism during the spring festival. Suwanapum Airport in, in cooperation with Airports of Thailand or AOT and the Immigration Bureau held a ceremony to introduce its latest online service to streamline immigration procedures. Under the campaign, citizens of 20 countries are entitled to a visa on arrival fee waiver, which can be applied for online. The Thai government's latest move is intended to stimulate and promote tourism, as well as enhance Thailand's attractiveness among foreign visitors during the high travel season as Chinese New Year approaches. The 20 countries eligible for the waiver include Andorra, Bulgaria, Bhutan, China, including Taiwan, Cyprus, Ethiopia, Fiji, India, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Maldives, Malta, Mauritius, Papua New Guinea, Romania, San Marino, Saudi Arabia, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. Citizens of these countries will be exempted from the 2000 baht visa on arrival fee. Tourists from any of the 20 countries flying Thai Airways can apply for an e-visa on arrival 24 hours a day. After a break, we see more of what happened around ASEAN. Show Thai to the World, a concept of Siam style program to introduce you to well known Thai role models. Ultimate amazing tourist attractions, innovative Thai products. Let's proudly join Siam styles from four regions. 77 provinces across Thailand. The Pollution Control Department or PCD hosted the 20th meeting of the ASEAN Working Group on Coastal and Marine Environment until January 31st in Phuket, southern province of Thailand. 
The meeting serves as a platform for discussing and following up on the implementation of the ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community Blueprint 2025 or a SCC Blueprint 2025, as well as the operation plan of the working group. The event has been attended by representatives of the working group from ASEAN member states and those from dialogue countries and international agencies. On January 31st, the PCD led the group and participants to study waste and wastewater management guidelines as well as the application of environmentally friendly energy on Hong Island, Than Bok Khorani Park in Grabi Province. Over 70 years of rail system in Yangkung in Myanmar, the government now has a plan to overhaul the whole system to support larger economy and to facilitate its population. Our correspondent Sirakit Ponbangkut has the details. The train is the key economic engine of Yangon. It takes people from outside the city to work and it takes variety of agricultural products from the source to the main market of the country. The car is also a main way to travel. After the liberalization of the car market, Yangon is a city with some of the most severe traffic congestion, especially during rush hour. So many people opt for the train service. It saves time and is much cheaper. One of the routes goes around the city. Passengers are able to go around the city to reach the other side in reasonable time. But with a long life and outdated technology, this transportation system has to be developed in order to be ready to support the expansions of the economy and society. Yangon Circular Railway is a train system that has been operated for over 70 years since the English colonization era. Now, the country agrees that it's time for an overhaul of the whole system by 2020 in order to increase the capacity and quality of transportation. And this is the reason why they need the overhaul. The improvement of the railway system can be divided into two main parts the railway system and the wagon system. The rail system is managed by the Myanmar government. Locomotives and wagons will be provided by Japanese company, Jaiga, and work is expected to be completed by 2020. The system now runs at rate of 2 hours and 15 minutes to complete the whole circular route and accommodates 80,000 passengers per day. It is planned to handle up to 250 people per day and to reduce travel time to just 1 hour and 15 minutes after the improvement. This is just the beginning of the development of the rail system of the country. In the future, there will be construction of missing links and the construction of new tracks. It will connect to countries like China, India, Cambodia and Thailand. The first missing links will connect through Ganjanaburi. When the rail system in both countries are connected, they will bring many benefits, but the most prominent is the economic expansions of the two countries. Because of the growth of the city, more car, more traffic, I take almost an hour to arrive at any places, but it only takes 15 minutes by train, also much cheaper price. This can help economy to grow. The Yangon Circular Railway not only connects around the city, but it also connects to the adjacent rail that go around the region and further to other provinces. If the rail improvement plan is done, it is expected to be a center of logistics of the region. Even though the master plan still has many challenges, upgrading all the trains is the priority. One example is the commitment of Myanmar government to improve the quality of life and the door to the outside world, this will be beneficial to the ASEAN region as a whole. Sirikit Pamankert, reporting for NBT World. And that's all for our weekly focus today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.